Welcome back to Country Cow Designs. I'm Jo. I'm Adam. And we make sewing patterns for bag makers. In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to make this messenger bag. This is our Kedemoth sewing pattern as designed by Adam. Yeah, so I needed a new messenger bag. Um, I couldn't really find anything that suited what I wanted. Uh, I wanted a large opening uh, with no flap. Um, this is what I came up with in the end. So it does have a flap of sorts, but um, this is the main opening that we've got here. So this is my girly version. So you can, you know, swap up your fabrics, make it a bit more feminine. And then on the inside, there's a large slip pocket. So you can fit a standard iPad in there, can't you? Standard iPad. It will probably fit some sort of small laptops, uh, but it will not fit a standard laptop. It's surprising how big a bag needs to be, and it kind of makes it a bit unwieldy to you. So, yeah, it's not a laptop bag, is it? No, it's not. Now, on the back, it's got like a simple zip pocket, just like that. It's pretty big. So, it's not a complicated bag in that it's not got a ton of pockets. It's quite straightforward. Um, Adam says that's how the guys like it. Yeah, well, I'm simple, so I make a simple bag. It is an advanced pattern purely because of this zip. It's a lot of curves. It's it's kind of 3D, isn't it? It's kind of a 3D comes out. shape. So you'll see in the tutorial that as you're making it, it kind of looks a bit like a mess, doesn't it, at one stage, as you're trying to put it all together, but it does come good at the end. But it can be a bit tricky, but, I mean, if I can do it, I would say most people can do it. Yeah, we're going to cover every single step with you, so don't worry about that. Um, now, usually we do our tutorials on um, my Janome HD9 or my Benina 930 domestic sewing machine. For the first time, we're going to do it on Adam's industrial machine, his I, Sailrite Fabricator. I've been asking Jay to do this for ages, and because this is my design, I've got my way. should say that the pattern is domestic friendly, no issues there. I just three, chose to use on my machine. Yeah, these three were all made on my Janome. Um, and this is just sort of like a simple cotton. It's a little bit thicker than your standard quilting cotton. But if you're on a domestic machine, you can make it with quilting cotton. The stabilizers are going to give it its structure still. And then it's just going to mean that you've not got like a ton of bulk because you don't really want to be making it out of um, vinyl or something on a domestic machine. The bulk is going to be a problem for you. Yeah, I mean, for example, I did this with uh, made out of cork, which I've been really liking recently. I'm not confident my domestic machine would have made it through that. Especially as I put piping in this, and it was fine on my fabricator, but may have been a bit too much for the domestic. I think so. So it kind of gives you an idea of what you need to bear in mind with your materials. But you will see there is tons of ways to make this bag. Our testers made a whole bunch of designs. We'll put some up on the screen so you can see what they've been making. They are beautiful and they've some of them have used uh, faux leather, vinyl, real leather, um, cotton. We've got like a real yeah. variety from the testers. The pattern testers have done an amazing job and you'll see all of their photos when you um, visit the website. So if you want to sew along with us, then you can grab the sewing pattern from our website. Yep. countrycowdesigns.com and then you can actually sew through the video with us. I should say for this video I've opted to make this out of a vinyl Fomora which vinyl is probably the material I have least experience with so I've shot myself in the foot doing this on video but hopefully it'll turn out okay at the end. <laughs> yep you're gonna have me for the overhead and Adam for the sewing so um, let's get started and we hope that you will enjoy this video tutorial. Hang on till the end if you want to see a little preview of the next pattern that we're going to be working on, which we're working on in tandem with another designer. So let's get started. For our fabrics, we're using this um, nautical theme. So this is actually a big octopus. So got all the lining pieces cut out and for all of the cotton pieces, they're interfaced with, um, we're just using like a medium woven interfacing. For the stabilizers, we have Peltex, except for this one piece, which is Decaville Heavy. So you can use either Peltex or Decaville Heavy. Um, we cut out all the pieces and then realized we've run out of Peltex. So this one piece is Decaville Heavy, but you can use whichever one you want. It's gonna give a very similar sort of finish to the bag. And for the exterior fabric, we're using this Mora Faux Leather. So we'll link all of the fabrics and everything um, in the video description if you're looking for them. So this is, it's not too thick, it's not sticky, it's quite a nice faux leather to sew with. 
Then we've got tan coloured zip tape and webbing and we've got copper hardware. We're going to use rivets in this but they are optional so if you don't have a rivet press don't worry about that. And then we've got our little octopus zip balls to go with this. Step one of the written pattern is preparation. That's all about printing your pattern, cutting out your pattern pieces, stabilizers, things like that. Make sure that you follow that step before you begin. But for this video tutorial, we're going to jump straight into step two. Step two is the exterior back panel. For this step, you're going to need your zip, your two zip pocket pieces in lining fabric. And then in your exterior fabric, you're going to have the, the back top panel and the back bottom panel. If you are sewing this on a domestic machine, I recommend using the zip tab method, which is in the written pattern. But as we're making this on an industrial machine, we're just going to show you in the video tutorial how to make it without the zip tabs. So the first thing that you want to do is put your zip pull onto the zip tape. You can add this later on, but just to make sure that we don't forget it, we're going to do it now. Now you want your exterior bottom panel right side up and you're going to place the zip right sides together on that top straight edge. Take that over to the sewing machine and baste that on with a eighth of an inch seam allowance. Throughout this tutorial, the standard seam allowance is three eighths of an inch unless stated otherwise. And for top stitching and basting, we'll use an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab one of your lining pocket pieces and you're going to place that right sides together with the exterior piece and clip those together. Now we're going to sew that using a quarter of an inch seam allowance or slightly larger than a quarter of an inch. Um, it's really up to you what you prefer and how much of your zip tape you want on show. We can trim the panel at the end to make it fit. So if you want to use a quarter inch seam allowance, that's fine. Uh, but also if you want to use slightly larger than a quarter of an inch, that will work great too. Now that's sewn, we want to push both fabrics away from the zip. So I'm going to use my seam roller to do that. If you're using all cotton fabrics, you could just use an iron. I'm going to add a few clips down the sides. And we're going to top stitch that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. As you're attaching this panel, just bear in mind that you want the zip to be closing to the left. Unless, of course, you'd like it closing to the right, but closing to the left does seem to be the standard in bag making. So grab your exterior back top and this is how it's going to sit. So we're just going to fold it down so it's right sides together with the zip and clip together. And baste that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So flip that over so that you're looking at the first pocket piece. Grab your second pocket piece and you're going to place the right sides together with the first one. Line it up with the top edge of the zip and clip together. Now sew that together using the same seam allowance that you did on the other side of the zip. So flip that back over and push this top piece up. Again, I'm going to roll it with my seam roller just to kind of get a nice flat edge. And then we're going to top st stitch through this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so flip this panel back over again. And don't worry if you've caught that in the top stitch, it's really not going to matter. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to clip this together. So we're just clipping the sides of the pocket, not the exterior panel. Okay, and I'm just going to fold the longer piece around so that it's clipped right around that shorter piece. Okay. 
Now what we're going to do is sew the bottom of the pocket, but you're going to pull it away from the main panel as you do it, because you do not want to sew through your exterior. So the last thing we're going to do on this panel is now clip the pocket to the exterior part. And then we're just going to baste these sides to fix that pocket in place. When basting these sides, we recommend doing both from top to bottom. That way, if your fabrics stretch, they'll stretch in the same direction. So that's that panel finished. We'll move that aside and move on to the next step. Step three is the lining back panel. For this step, you're going to need your main lining panel, which should already have the stabilizer fuse to the back and then two slip pocket pieces. So the first thing that we're going to do on the back of these slip pocket pieces is mark it three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. And then we're going to fold it up to the line and press it. You want to do this with both of your slip pocket pieces and you're folding up from the bottom edge. So once that's done, you want to put your pocket pieces right sides together. Make sure that the folded edges line up perfectly. That's the most important bit. And then we're just going to clip it all the way around. Now we need to sew these three edges. We're not sewing the folded edge, but we're just doing the other three edges with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, we're just going to trim down these corners for a need to finish. So I'm just going to be careful not to uh, cut the stitches, but we basically just want to reduce the bulk for when we turn this out. So turn your pocket right sides out. And if you have a turning tool of some kind, this will make it easier to get the points out on these corners. So just spend a moment doing that. And then what we're going to do is press the pocket with an iron. Once your pocket is nice and neat, you just need to top stitch it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's top stitched, you just want to mark the center on this bottom folded edge. So this folded edge is still open. Then grab your main lining panel and you want to mark it one and a half inches up. And again, mark the center on that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to match those center marks, place the pocket on the line, and that's where your pocket's going to be. So Adam cut this out in an attempt to match it to the back panel. So what I'm going to do is just adjust it so it's absolutely perfect. It's a tiny bit above my line, but it's absolutely fine. It's better that the pocket matches. Now remember when you're making marks on your fabric, always use an erasable fabric pen. So pin that in place and then we're going to sew the sides and the bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and that's when the bottom of this pocket will get closed up. If you're working with thick fabric for your lining, you might prefer to use double sided tape rather than pins as this will be easier. Make sure you backstitch well at the beginning and end of the slip pocket because it will be getting a lot of use. Okay, so now that's done, the last thing we have to do in this step is to attach these together. Now, you might notice we've got a bit of waviness here in the vinyl. This is because of the tension. So um, Adam's been working with some really thick leather recently and he hadn't adjusted his bobbin tension yet. So if you get a little bit of waviness like this, which is also creating a bit of waviness in the zip, it's worth just checking your tension. So let's place these two wrong sides together and clip them together. Now we're going to baste all the way around this panel with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So if you have any overhang from your pockets or anything, you can just trim that down so that the entire panel is the same size. And that's your back panel done. So if you want to have piping in your bag, now is the time to fit it to this panel. Um, we're not going to show that in this video tutorial, but we'll put a link up now if you want to know how to do piping. Step four is the exterior front panel. 
For this step, you're going to need the stabilizer, exterior and lining for the top section. You're going to need the stabilizer, exterior and lining for the tongue. And you're also going to need the stabilizer, exterior and lining for the bottom section. You'll also need your zip and two zip pulls. But if you're using continuous zip tape like me, I recommend leaving these zip pulls off until we're finished constructing this panel. To start with, on all of the lining and exterior pattern pieces, you're going to want to mark the center top and bottom. You also need to mark the center on both sides of your zip. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my exterior tongue piece, I'm going to place the zip right sides together and match those center marks. Now I'm going to clip the zip all of the way around this piece and as I get to these curves I'm just going to snip into the zip just a tiny bit so that it spreads around the curve nice and neatly. If you're worried about it fraying you can use a little bit of fray check just to treat the edge of the zip and make sure that it doesn't fray. Now that's clipped, we're going to baste it in place. So just to avoid any stretch, we're going to start in the center and then sew out to each side. That's just going to make sure that if the zip stretches or anything like that, it's going to be even on both sides. You should have a tiny bit of overhang on the bottom here. That's intentional. And to get a nice flat finish, what we're going to do is guide it around with a flat head screwdriver. So if you have one handy, that will make things easier. If not, you could use an awl or a stiletto or any kind of tool like that. So take your time with this panel. This bag doesn't take long to come together, but this front panel is really where you're gonna notice the extra time if you put it in. None of the stabilizers should be fused to the pattern pieces at this point. We're gonna fit all of them when we're top stitching. Now grab your lining tongue piece and what we're going to do is place that so it's right sides together with the exterior and the zip is sandwiched in between. Make sure that you match up your centre mark so it's nice and neat and then just clip the whole thing all the way around. Now we're going to sew these three sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to leave the bottom edge open and as we do this we want to make sure that the zip is flat as you go around. That's where the flat head screwdriver is especially helpful because you can kind of flatten out the zip as you get to it. So if you've got access to one, I definitely recommend using it for this step. Again, we're gonna start in the center and work our way out to both sides. So if there's any stretch in the fabrics, it will be even on both sides of the curve. So to ensure that these curves lay nice and flat, what we're gonna do is trim the curve with some pinking shears. Now, if you don't have pinking shears, you can just cut into it just a tiny bit with normal scissors. What we're doing is just like cutting out a little bit of this seam with these little triangles, and it's gonna mean that the curve can sit nice and flat. Now, if you're worried about your zip, fraying, which they can tend to do, you could use a bit of fray check on there and this will just ensure that the zip doesn't fray over time. Okay, so now we're going to turn this right side out. We still don't have any stabilizer here yet. That's going to be the next step. So first what you want to do is push it out and kind of roll out the seams. Use your fingers to really get in there. And you can use a seam roller and that kind of thing. Now, eventually when the bag is finished, it's kind of gonna, the zip's gonna sit flat like this. So actually you can see that the curve is really nice and neat. 
Now what we want to do is put the stabilizer in before we top stitch it. So you should just be able to fit your stabilizer, just slide it right in. And you want to make sure that the seams are sitting on top of the stabilizer, so the stabilizer is underneath. Make sure it's as far up as it can go. Okay, so it's not going to be coming all the way down. You're going to have a gap here, which is great because we don't really want it in the seam. So we're going to take this over to the machine and top stitch it. You might find that easier if you flip your zip up and then you can top stitch around here with ease. For top stitching, you usually want to use a slightly longer stitch length, but bear in mind when you're sewing curves that the longer the stitch length, the harder it is to sew the curve. So when you're top stitching that, you're also gonna base the bottom edge closed. Now what we're going to do is grab the top piece. Now you can place it as it's going to be, so it's going to be like that. And then you just simply want to match this centre mark on the bottom to the centre mark on the top of the zip. Put them right sides together and clip. Okay, so now what we want to do is clip this around the rest of the zip, which you can see is going to be a bit more awkward because of the curve. As you do it, you can just snip into the zip and snip into the fabric as you feel that you need to. Make sure that they're small snips, less than a quarter inch, because you don't want them showing through your seam allowance. Okay, so there's a lot of room for error in this panel, so don't panic that these like legs are too long. That is absolutely fine. We've made it so that everything's gonna need to be trimmed down, which means we can work with the curve. It's, if you've made our Vexa pattern, you'll know that when all the pattern pieces are exactly the right size, it can make it a little bit difficult when you're working with two different fabrics. So let's say you've got vinyl for the exterior, cotton for the lining. By doing it this way, we've got loads of room for fabrics to move and stretch and then we're just gonna trim the panel to the right size when we're done. So I've clipped that on. Personally, I find it easiest to sew it like this on the machine, because then I can sew around the curve. Figure out what works best for you. For me, that's the easiest way to sew the zip, but figure out what works best for you. We're gonna baste this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, you'll notice that Adam's starting from the middle and then sewing down the sides. Um, I haven't done this for all of my bags and in my opinion they've turned out okay but if you want a really really neat bag and you want both of your corners to be exactly the same shape this is the safest option and the safest way to do it. Okay, so now we need to attach the lining top piece, which ultimately is going to end up like this. So what you want to do is place it, you know, where you where you want it to be. We've got a centre mark on the bottom here, and you should have a centre mark on the bottom of your zip. And what you want to do is put those together and put them in place. So hopefully you can see there, this is the underside of your zip and the right side of your lining top. So we're gonna do the same as before. I'm gonna snip into the zip so it fits around the curve better and I'm gonna attach this all the way down here. Okay, so my zip is already snipped from before. So what I'm just gonna do is try and get a neat fit around here. Now, don't worry if your fabric stretches a little bit right now. 
I would just recommend making sure it's nice and tight. So if there is any stretch, that you're kind of get, getting that stretch around the curve now. So that way when you're sewing it, it's not going to move and it's not going to stretch. Now that's clipped in place. You can tell that my lining piece is slightly longer. So these legs are coming down slightly further for the lining. There's two reasons for that. Although I cut them at the same size, it's because the lining is on the inside of this curve. So that's gonna make it ever so slightly different. But it's also quite likely because I'm using cotton for the lining. So it's a little bit stretchier. It's kind of stretching through that curve better. So don't worry about it. This is all gonna come out when we're trimming this down. So just don't worry. What you'll need to worry about is getting a nice neat curve. So we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance around here. And again, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to try and keep that zip flat as we sew. So Adam is now sewing this on in one go rather than starting from the center and working out. That's because the exterior has been basted on. That's the bit he's most worried about and it's gonna be easier to sew the lining in just one section. Okay, so now we need to kind of press this all out. So what you wanna do is press it around the zip seam. So I'm gonna do the exterior first. Um, if you have a seam roller, it is great for wax canvas or vinyl. Okay, and then we kind of wanna get the lining to sit out as well. Now this is going to be difficult because it is a curve so it's it's not going to feel super neat when you're doing it but we just want to make sure it's nicely pressed. Okay so when the bag's done it's going to kind of sit with the zip coming out. This kind of makes it 3D. So what I like to do is put the stabilizer in now, but I don't actually fuse it in place because all of this is gonna move a lot when we're constructing the bag. And I just, I want it to be able to move around and get a nice neat finish. For now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in between the exterior and the lining. And I want it to be ideally underneath the seam, but what's important is just to get it in as close as you can to the seam. Okay, so I'm gonna push it in there. I'm gonna clip my lining and exterior together. Now again, because these are very different fabrics, if you're working with quite different fabrics, you're gonna get a lot of movement here. You see that the exterior is coming out further than the lining. Don't worry about it. The shape of this bag, it just is gonna mean there's a lot of movement in the fabrics. And what we're gonna do is just concentrate on getting this neat and then we're gonna trim it down to the sides that we need. Okay, so actually I'm gonna have my stabilizer on top of the seam. Then I can clip everything together. And as you're going, everything's just gonna move a bit. Don't worry about it, just get some clips on. It will kind of tame it and hold it all in place. I'd say this is the hardest part on this bag. Then I'm just gonna see how my lining's looking. I think this needs to push out a little bit here. So just don't be afraid to add a ton of clips. So this is where you'll find the bag kind of looks a bit messy. This is because once we sew it in, it's gonna kind of pop the panel out. It's gonna change the shape of it. It's not really supposed to lay like completely flat like it is right now. So just make sure that you've got it as neat as you can that the stabilizer is right in up against this seam because what we're gonna do now, we're gonna top stitch this seam and that's gonna make sure that the stabilizer is secured into place. Then we will just baste this around the outside because it's just gonna make it slightly easier for the next few steps.
Okay, so don't panic that it's not looking absolutely neat. Once we sew this into the bag and it's kind of pulled by the gusset, it's all gonna start to take a nicer shape. Now the next step, don't forget to put your zip pulls on if you haven't already. So I'm gonna put one on from each end so that we've got two closing towards each other. Okay, so we wanna make sure that the zips are lying flat because this is how it's gonna be on the bag. It's gonna be completely flat at the bottom. And then you're gonna grab your exterior bottom piece and place that right sides together. So you should have some center marks to match up on the bottom. Now, if you want to, you can of course trim down these legs here. I'm just gonna leave mine long. It's not gonna make any difference to the finished bag and I prefer to have extra in the seams where possible just for added strength. So we're just gonna baste that on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's basted, flip it over and grab the lining bottom piece. And you're gonna place that right sides together with the lining and clip together. And now we're gonna sew that with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, we're gonna press this away from the seam. We're gonna do this with the lining and the exterior. So we're gonna grab the bottom stabilizer and slip that in. And you wanna make sure that it's centered and on top of that seam. Could use a little bit of glue here if you wanted to just make sure it doesn't move on you, but that's totally up to you. So we're gonna make sure it's against the seam so it's gonna to be top stitched in place. And then we're gonna clip the lining and exterior together. Now we're gonna to top stitch through the stabilizer, through the exterior and the lining with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now you can start to see your finished panel. What we're gonna do is grab the first panel that you made and you wanna match your top center marks together and just clip them together. So we're gonna use this one as a template for trimming down the other panel. So grab a marker, a fabric marker, and we're just gonna trace all the way around this panel to make sure that they're the same size when finished. So when you're tracing onto the panel below, you don't wanna be like pushing it down, squashing it because the zip here is gonna sit like this, like at a 90 degree angle to the bag. So if you kind of squash it down, you might end up changing the shape of that back panel. You just wanna trace it around lightly as it is. So when you're done, you can see why we basted it. You don't have to baste that beforehand, but it makes it a lot easier because otherwise there's just clips everywhere. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna baste inside the line that we just marked all the way around and then trim it down to match. When you're done, you can just check that it matches the other panel. Perfect. Okay, so if you want to add piping to your bag, you'll want to add that now before moving on to the next step. Step five is the exterior gusset. For this step, you're gonna need your exterior gusset top, exterior gusset base, lining gusset base, lining gusset top, your two strap tabs, two rectangle rings, and the webbing for your grab handle. So the first thing you're gonna need is your lining and exterior gusset tops. So the Stabilizer should be fused centrally to either your lining or your exterior piece, whichever is fine, whichever fabric you know prefers the heat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place these wrong sides together and just clip them together. Now we're gonna baste all four edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now set that aside for a moment and grab your grab handle. So you want to mark it one and a half inches in from one edge. And then we're gonna bring the two edges to meet that line. So I'm gonna stick mine down using a bit of double-sided tape. Now 
Now that's joined at the line, we're going to sew just the two long edges using a scant eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, you need to mark it one and a half inches in from each edge. Make sure you're using an erasable fabric pen. On your exterior side of your top gusset, you also want to mark these measurements here, which are in the pattern. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place the grab handle so that it sits within those marks. Now to fix it in place, I'm just going to use a little bit of double sided tape on the ends here. We're going to sew a box here up to the one and a half inch line that you marked. So you're going to sew a box around all edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to sew an X through here. Alternatively, if you prefer, rather than doing the X, you can just put two rivets within the box. So there you have it. We went with rivets rather than an X. So you're going through the lining as well when you're doing this. I know it's not as pretty, but it's going to add strength to the handle. So that's why we're doing it that way. Now set that aside and grab your strap tabs. So you've got your two strap tabs. On the back, you want to draw a line down the center. And then I'm going to use a bit of double sided tape because I'm using vinyl, but you could just um, fold these in and press it if you're using cotton. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring the two sides in to meet that center line. You're going to do this with both of your strap tabs and then we're just going to top stitch the long edges. Once those are top stitched, grab your rectangle rings and what you're going to do is just fold them over, making sure that the raw edge is on the inside so it won't be seen. So clip those together at the bottom and now we're going to mark it half an inch up from the bottom edge and that will help us to align it into the seam. Baste that bottom edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now those are both basted. Grab your exterior side of your, of your top gusset. Now you should have marked it in from each edge as shown in the pattern. And what we're going to do is we're going to place one of these between those marks. And the line that you marked, that half inch line, is going to line up with the edge here. So just clip that in place. And then we're just going to baste that on. And we're going to do exactly the same with the other one on this side. OK, now grab your exterior gusset base and we're just going to put it right sides together. And we're going to line up the short edges here and clip them together. OK, so we're just going to baste this together. Now, if you're using a domestic sewing machine, you're probably going to want a hump jumper for getting over these strap tabs. So just bear that in mind. But first of all, we're just going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to baste this in place. OK, now you're going to flip that over so that you're looking at the lining side. Grab your lining gusset base and place it right sides together with the lining here. So we're just going to clip those short edges together. Now we're going to sew this with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you like a really tight gusset, you can use slightly bigger than a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Don't go as far as a half inch, but just a little bit bigger. That will make your gusset slightly smaller and tighter to fit, which I love, but not everybody does. So I'll leave that up to you to decide. If you've got like quite a stretchy kind of fabric as well, then I'd use the slightly bigger seam allowance. OK, so now we're going to pull this away. And you can just give it a little press to get that seam sitting neat. Pull the lining away as well. Give that a press. Make sure that they're both sitting nice and neat. And then we're just going to put a couple of clips here to hold it all together. There's a lot of layers here. So if you're on a domestic machine, consider changing to a larger needle and also using a hump jumper to get over that strap tab. Now that's top stitched, I'm going to grab the other end of the exterior gusset and I'm going to match it up with this end and just clip them right sides together and just baste that short end with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now flip that over and bring the other side of the lining so it's right sides together with this side and clip those together. 
and we're going to sew this short edge with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. But if you used a slightly larger seam allowance on the other side, do the same thing here. Now that's sewn, we're going to press that away on the lining and we're going to do the same on the exterior. So we're going to kind of unravel this so that the lining and exterior are wrong sides together. And then I'm going to match up my centers and just clip them together so that everything's going to kind of stay in the right place. Okay, so we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're just going to top stitch through here. Now that's top stitch, we just need to close up the rest of the gusset. So we're going to bring the lining and exterior together and just clip it along both edges. Now we're going to baste each side of this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And that's your gusset finished. So just mark the centers, top and bottom on both sides. And now we can move on to the final step. Step six is final assembly. For this step, you're going to need your two main panels and your gusset. Now in the pattern, I recommend fitting the front panel first because for me, um, the first panel is easiest to sew on and I want the front panel to look absolutely amazing. However, Adam has cut these fabrics out to try and make it look like the octopus's legs are coming out the sides. So for that reason only, I'm going to fit the back panel first. So what I've done is I've marked the top and bottom centers on my panels. Top and bottom centers are matched on here as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this right sides together and match up the top and bottom marks and clip them in place. Now those center marks are clipped. What I'm gonna do is clip the rest around. But when I get to the curves, I'm going to snip into the gusset just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch or less. And this will allow it to fit neatly around the curve. Now remember when you're sewing these curves that you're not actually sewing around the edge, you're sewing three eighths of an inch in. And the circumference there is quite a bit smaller, which is why the gusset needs to be slightly smaller. So it's gonna have to stretch as you fit it around the curves. And that's what these snips are gonna help with. So we're now gonna sew this on with a scant three eighths of an inch seam allowance because when we use the binding, we're gonna do a three eighths of an inch. And again, we don't really wanna sew over the same stitches twice. Now, if you struggle with sewing curves, my top tip would be to just hand baste it in place. So you can just go with um, a, a hand needle and you can just literally like put some thread through all the way around. It takes a bit of time, but it's so much easier to sew on the machine because nothing's gonna move and you're not gonna have the clips in the way. So if you want a really neat finish, that's a great way to do it. Personally, I prefer to sew with it this side up, the gusset side up, um, but I do go back and forth on that. So choose which way you prefer and go ahead and sew the gusset onto that panel. Another option is to use staples to hold your seams in place, which is Adam's preferred method that he's using here. But watch out for the staples when you're sewing. Now that side is sewn on, I need to attach my binding. So you could use half inch double fold bias binding if you want to, which means it'll be half inch once folded. I'm gonna use waterproof canvas instead. So this is a heavy waterproof canvas. It's 600 GSM, which is grams per square meter. I think that's about 20 ounces. I've cut it one inch wide, then I'm just gonna fold it in so I'm folding it wrong sides together. And then I just use my seam roller to press it all the way down so it's got a nice fold down the middle. 
Okay, once it's done, it's gonna have this nice crease down the center. I'm gonna grab my bag and I'm gonna go for the bottom center. I'm gonna wrap it around like this and then clip it in place. Now, I recommend that the easiest way to do this is to do it from the side that you're not sewing. So I'm gonna sew it from this side. So I'm gonna clip it from this side. That way I can make sure all of the stitching is covered. Then when I'm sewing it, I can clearly see the other side. So then if we've got any stitches showing, they should definitely be covered. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this in place all the way around the seam. If you're using double fold bias binding, you're gonna do exactly the same thing here. There are other methods for attaching binding, but this is my preferred method. It means less stitching, less stitch holes, especially if you're using vinyl or cork. And for me, it always seems to result in a neater finish. Now that I'm back around where I started, I'm gonna trim this down. So I've got a bit of overlay here. I'm just gonna fold this over so that the raw edge is gonna be hidden and then I'm gonna clip it over where I started. Make sure that your stitching is all hidden. None of it should be on show here. Now we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and sew it on with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I definitely recommend using an awl for this step. It does make it a lot easier to hold the binding in place as you sew. So this is a little bit tougher on this bag because we have the piping added. If you don't have piping, it's not gonna be quite as difficult to sew. Once you've got your binding attached, just check that you've caught it all the way around on the other side. And then before we go any further, you can just pop it out and check for any imperfections, any puckers, anything that you wanna rectify now before you go any further. So for example, just here, we've got a little bit of a problem here with the piping. So we're just gonna go back and redo that corner. And actually we're gonna have the same thing on this curve. So just pop it back out and just fix them before you go any further. Don't worry if you know it takes two attempts to get it perfect. Um, that is just the way it goes, especially when you're working with piping. Once you're happy with that, grab your other panel and we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna match the center marks, top and bottom to the gusset and clip those together first. Now we're gonna clip the rest into place. And as we go around the curves again, we're just gonna snip into the gusset a tiny bit, about a quarter of an inch, just to make sure that this fits well around the curves. Now that's clipped in place, you can go ahead and sew it on your machine, or if you prefer, you can hand baste or staple the curves in place first. So you might find it easier to sew um, with the zip undone. Um, I'll leave that up to you. But now we're gonna attach the waterproof canvas binding. So of course you can use normal binding if you prefer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start at the bottom and clip it all the way around exactly like we did with the other side. 
So once you get to the end, just fold over that raw edge and just wrap it around where you started. And then just check that everything's looking neat, that your stitching is hidden by the binding. Take it over to the machine and sew that on. Now that's sewn, we can turn out the bag. So you just wanna pop the whole thing out through the tongue opening. So thankfully it's quite a big opening, but still it might just take you a while to push the whole thing out. So spend a bit of time pushing your curves out and you can kind of push your binding toward the gusset. It normally gives it a neater finish. Okay, so there's our finished bag. Now you can see there's a little bit up here where the piping went in too far. So we're gonna fix that in a minute. But first I'm gonna show you how to do the final step of adding the strap. So grab your webbing and what we're gonna do is put it up and over the center bar. And you wanna fold the raw edge underneath so it's gonna be hidden. like that. So I'm just going to clip that in place. And then I'm going to fit a couple of rivets as close as I can get to this strap slider and that will hold it in place. Okay so grab the other end of your strap and you're going to put it through this left D-ring. Now you want to make sure it's straight and sitting flat all the way. We're going to bring this end back and put it up and over that center bar again. So just pull that tight and just check that there's no folds or anything in there. Then you can put it through the right hand rectangle ring by coming from the right. And then we're going to again fold it over to hold that raw edge and then clip it in place. And I'm gonna set two rivets there to hold that in place. So there's your finished bag. We're just gonna take this back to the sewing machine. We're just gonna seam rip this bit and redo it so that, that piping is sitting proud out on that curve. And then we'll show you the finished bag. And there it is. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. I made life a bit hard for myself choosing vinyl, which I'm not used to with uh, some chunky piping but overall i'm actually pretty happy with it mm, i think it looks pretty cool and the lining which has been ages cutting out Ta -da! with the octopus <laughs> i think yeah actually looking at the camera I can, <laughs> it looks quite cool actually he does look pretty cool he looks like he's climbing out of your bag yeah and it matches the octopus zips and things like that so kraken's coming to get you i'm fairly happy how that turned out and hopefully if you follow along with your own bag it'll it'll turn out as good if not better. So we promised you a little sneak peek of our next pattern. So here it is. Okay, so this is our pattern that's going to be in conjunction with Bed Hog Shop. So Amy over at Bed Hog Shop, she designed the bag. There's actually two styles, this is just one of them. Um, so she designed the bag completely and then we just create the pattern for it and do the video tutorial and that sort of thing. She's a brilliant designer. Now I know this looks like a tote, like just a normal tote, but it's more than that more than that. It's different to anything we've ever done before because what it actually is is a project bag or a craft bag. So I didn't realize these existed. This is a bit of a new thing for me. Yeah so it folds down like so and inside it has about 100 pockets for um, crochet needles and all of that sort of stuff and the yarn. I think it's the yarn that you crochet with. Um, it's got a little yarn feeder that the yarn comes through so it doesn't get tangled. And then it's got a little key ring over here. So it's it's all about, you know, crafty projects, that sort of thing. It's really cool. And yeah, it's not something like neither of us have ever done no. knitting, crocheting, any of that sort of stuff. So it's yeah, no idea. Us. So I'm glad Amy designed this for us. So this pattern we hope will be coming out maybe May. 
we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, but yeah, as I said, there's going to be another version of it, which is slightly different, same overall shape, but a different exterior design. If you somehow don't follow Amy at Bedhog Shop on Instagram, you should really check her stuff out mm -hmm. and you can buy completed bags and she's her standard bag making is it's really up there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, she makes incredible bags. So if you want to buy finished bags, she's the one to go to. But yeah, we're re really looking forward to doing this one. So thank you so much for joining us for this tutorial today. And um, we hope to see you soon. Yep. See you next time. Bye. Bye.